Hello and welcome to this beginner tutorial on AI Army Control. In Hearts of Iron 3, you have the ability to put a part or all of your military under AI control. To do so, simply select any HQ unit from core to theater and press this button. Now, this HQ and all of its subordinates are controlled by the AI and some new options have been enabled. You can see here that the HQ currently has no objectives. To change that, right-click any province while you have the AI-controlled HQ selected. This will set that province as an objective for this HQ. There can be multiple objectives at the same time, but try to keep the list small. Focus on important provinces such as capitals, airports and strategically important locations. So now that the AI has an objective to target, we have to let it know how it should act. For this purpose, we have the ability to select so-called stances. These can be set separately for ground, air and naval units. The default is defensive stance and hovering over it will give you an explanation of what it does. Defensive stance will cause the AI to keep a solid front and attack only when victory is highly likely. Maybe we want this particular HQ to be more aggressive, so we can instead set it to the blitzing stance. The AI will then act accordingly. Every stance is useful in some situations. The prepare stance, for example, is great for giving the AI some time to get into position before you declare war. Now you might have noticed this black line appearing when I gave the HQ an objective. This represents the front that this HQ will cover, considering its objective and the amount of units at its disposal. This particular HQ only has three infantry divisions under its command, so it can only cover a small area. If we instead select the Eastern Theater HQ, we can see that it covers a much larger front. When putting a large amount of units under AI control, such as a whole theater, you may want to enable AI unit reorganization. Doing this will allow the AI to create new HQs and shuffle its subordinates around as it pleases. This is a double-edged sword because the AI can screw this up quite badly, but if you don't allow it to reorganize, it'll usually end up just as bad, with units out of range of their HQs and assignments that make no sense at all. I suggest you enable it for theaters, but you may want to keep smaller forces the way you set them up yourself. Another thing here is that the AI tells you what it believes it needs to succeed in attacking or defending its objectives and fronts. This can give you some idea of what you can build to help out, but sometimes the requests are just crazy and not something you should rely on too much. Alright, so this is how you use AI control for your army. Select an HQ, enable AI, set one or more objectives for the AI to attack or defend, and set the stance depending on your strategy. That's all there is to it, the AI will handle the rest. Before you go, I want to show you one more thing. Allied objectives. When you're at war, you have the ability to influence your allies AI by giving them objectives similar to the way you give them to your HQs. This works by selecting the province you wish to set as an objective for one of your allies. Then click this little arrow button down here. Now simply select one or multiple allies from the list to set this as their objective. Don't count on it too much as the AI will not drop everything and focus only on the objective you give it. I still believe it's a good idea to set up these allied objectives as the AI will sometimes send support or give you expeditionary forces to use. That's all for today, thanks for watching and have fun.